broaden the discussion out a little okay. bit to actually think through what will this policy well, do to help you address the challenges that you've identified. And we can, yes, we can get bogged down in the technical detail, but remember, this is a pilot. We're trying to encourage more agile and experimental uh, responses and a few workarounds as well. So let's not lose sight of that as well. Yeah. So over to, to Kathy, though. These are the challenges we've identified faced by the accelerators. Yeah, so just went through all your um, forms, your application forms. Thank you for agreeing to, to share those with us so that we can um, sort of look at the, the common sort of, you see there is quite a lot of commonality across the, um, with these um, common challenges, as you can see. So it's the used to be right. about the seats, so. Yeah, declining footfall. Um, so you know, lack, lack of people in the in the in the in the, in the area, uh, degrading uh, physical infrastructure, and issues around safety and, and vacancy rates. So they, they are pretty much common to, to to all of your all of your places. So what we really want to sort of in this last session is think about the policy that we've just heard about. You know, and what you've read in terms of the high street accelerators, and thinking about your purpose. How how you know, how can we be a bit creative? Because there are obviously, with any funds and things like that, there might be some, you know, it's not, not always so straightforward. How, can, we, can we think creatively about how, how we might get around some, some, of these, some of these issues? Do we need to start engaging some people sort of now in some activity? Um, and how, how, are we going to do, how are we going to do that? Um, I think that's, that's sort of what I'd like to really just get a bit of discussion going between between you with, with help from Steve. So. I was going to get the ball rolling and something I picked out immediately um, and this is partly from wider research on my own observations by delivering placemaking workshops and the same challenge I've, I've hit in many locations is landlord engagement so I'd be interested to hear everyone's got any views on that obviously for Mark it's, <laughs> it's, it's a vested interest in property might be able to offer some words of advice there but but I just want to find out a little bit more. Is, is, have you got a solution? Have you worked it out? Or is, is, this, is it a common challenge? Um, Go on, Mary. One of the things, one of the issues I've got now, I'm sorry, still thinking about the issue of um, landlord engagement. Understanding what has failed in those voids before, because there's no point if a cafe has been in that unit three times and each time it's failed. It's sort of trying to get that really intelligent, sort of granular detail on the void, yeah. what the barriers are. Is it a DJ issue? Is it the budget to unlock it? Is it planning issues? So, trying to get that sort of audit done so that we've got a really clear understanding of what's there. But also a lease audit, so understanding where the bit of the rise is coming. So if we've got a cluster of banks or anything that is already, you know, not worried about your banks and you really should be. Yeah. But if looking at the lease terms, you know, we've got an area where all those leases are going to start dropping out and things like that. So, so for me, one of the things we're going to do really early on, um, and we've talked to our town board on Monday afternoon about it, is getting that absolute clarity. Because then when we've got people coming in to town wanting to have space and trade, we can try to match them. Yeah, to do that match, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm going to bring in Matt, I've just seen him sneak in there and disturb. We're talking about landlord engagement and the various what's a very sensible plan, how this funding might be applied in the short term to do that donkey work yeah. around understanding who owns what. And so I just bring in your view from Altrincham, where you did that quite successfully. Yeah, so we, 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 we created a landlord and property agents forum, um, ostensibly because even with myself, we weren't able to make the connections with the right people, and some of these people are just, as you know, may not even live in the country and, and, or, or foreign investment funds. So we actually created a, a, a grouping that was uh, chaired by one of the uh, property agents who had their Western connection. We did a lot of work to understand um, who owned what, so the council supported that, um, and then we started to use that network um, of connections that they had within the property world to start to reach out. There was a bit of carrot and stick with some. Um, improvements to some units if you make ones that were offered, but there was also if you don't, also improved orders were being threatened as well, and there's a bail threat 
about CPOs, carried over stuff as well. So between parasitic and the forum, we managed to unlock quite a lot of stuff. And probably the experience of the task force that we're going around, that's one of the real wicked issues that needs to be addressed. And to be able to bring levels into the equation of how they can really support place. Just for a hand out, I mean, very quick question, brief answer. If you, if Ultragun was a high street accelerator, how would you be responding to this policy? Now, how would that, how would this policy, and, and how, career, yeah. how are you thinking of using the funding or the policy to... Is it question to I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I suppose, I was thinking back first. If yeah. you, if you were altering them now, how would you use this policy? Um, so the first thing on this bit, I would want to understand, in terms of landlords, uh, it, it, I want to know who, exactly who owns what, and that's the first thing. And then what's the level of engagement? So there will be some donkey work there to have to go and do that. And then very quickly start to get a grouping together and, and create that, a, a, a reach out, and then start to bring those people into the, into the conversation. I think that's a really essential thing to do as a thing for So us. just to get down to the mechanics then, of like, would, would you be using the funding, or...? Yeah, so we were looking at results, using that money to give us the results and dedicate to what, mm -hmm. um, to back in it, talking to them, understanding what their ambitions are for that space. You might like, I, I mean, we've got examples like people like Johnny Alderson, yeah. so that, I mean, that is real. Um, and then building that engagement, as you just said, so having those conversations and trying to get people interested in all the things we've got coffee there that we've got, because that's a real shock and, uh, and, we're, uh, and then planning, and, and all these things we're talking yeah. about. Well. We've got, we've got a question, but, but Mark, have you got a, a view on this landlord engagement, given yeah. your, your, your yeah. insider? Uh, give it your power one. No, I, I think it is fair. We do have quite, as an industry, we do have quite a strong um, agency function. And most of your agents in your towns or in your regional cities, you know, if I, if I go and speak to, yeah, I was going to say Cheatham and Mortimer, but maybe a strong local practice in Manchester, they will know. When all the, where all the lease expires are on, on Olden High Street. So the knowledge is there, they should frankly give it to you for free, I would hope, if you can collaborate with them. But at very worst, they'll have databases that they can access at not a lot of money, you know, a number of small thousands of pounds. I think there are some, I think you can lean into the commercial sector and they should be there to help. And if worse comes to worse, you might have to pay them a week, a couple of, couple of quid out of your 50 grand. So there's two gentlemen here. We have a problem that we feel is, is starting to feel international. When we offer a grant scheme, we've had two major grant schemes in the last 10 years where we're offering up to 85 90% of cost for external landlord, and landlords won't put the 10 or the 5 percent in because they can make money out of property that is in a terrible condition. Why would they spend any money at all? And this is really common in Blackpool. It doesn't, you can, actually, owner occupiers are often the best people to deal with because they see the value, even in signing a long term callback, 10 years, they see that value. But landlords with multiple properties across towns that are sort of ch perception challenge, let's call it that, they often are the ones that will not invest, even when you are giving them. The lion's share of the money. And I think what I'd be really interested in is to know if anyone else has overcome that problem or is experiencing exactly the same thing. Yeah, so, um, oh, yeah, well, so we'll go, we'll go there. I mean, I think we are a bit far further ahead in the fact that we are actually. Wait, where are you from again? Sorry. Blackburn. So yeah. we know it really well. We know who owns everything. But the main is we've got a long term because of this landlord issue. They're not because of lack of demand. Um, and what we have pursued now is acquisition of CPO because there is no way around it. Yeah. So, yes. we go to Mark at the back and then Lucy's itching yeah. to come in, yeah. itching yeah. to come in with her very yeah. new policy. So, um, so Mark Wiley from, um, from Hyde, um, those groups have said before, and apologies if you've got more than sweet in the book, but um, <laughs> the, um, the concept of finding out who holds everything is quite normal in some respects, but where Hyde, where, where, where we got to with regards to the master plan is potentially identifying some capitalist projects. Yeah. So we were talking before about, or someone was talking before about doing um, more with less. And in terms of identifying those capitalist projects and ensuring 
And it's not necessarily doorstep development because and that's in some respects broad. But as a commercial property landlord, um, with another hat on. A capitalist project also demonstrates what can be achieved. And as much as going along the route of looking at all the voids, you can't do everything all the time, all at once. And the reality is that when landlords see an uplift and somebody taking an opportunity, they also want a slice of that pie. And to identify everything, and almost forgive me for a scattered approach, it's not really a scattered approach, it's about identifying opportunities from that initial um, look at everything. To identify a, a capitalist project that is going to enable others to invest in that town is just as important. So I appreciate, you know, Aldrigan has a number of buildings that are high value, but it's just dropping back to that, which you could identify amongst thousands of others. But if you place the resource where you can get the most return, i.e. the capitalist project, and identify that, I think that, that is fundamentally one of the ways yeah. forward. I, I, I totally agree. I think that's how it unfolded in Altrincham, really, is, yeah. is, that, is that way, having the intelligence, but working with who you could work with, and then yeah, well, hoping that snowballs. There are projects happening around landlords who are still using it. So that's, okay, so that's, that's been good, Lucy. Thanks, it's uh, really, really interesting um, to, to hear that. Um, and I agree with the stories of Mark, uh, yeah, with what you're saying about identifying the capital of the project. I think we've got back to the value we're coming on later from that conversation, which is really, really interesting on that. So it's definitely worth listening and handling further. And um, I do want to use this opportunity to just highlight, if you haven't that's already um, noticed, that we are in response to this issue of intransient landlords, long term vacancy. How the participants feel that we are designing a new policy to tackle this specifically on high street rental evictions. I don't think I've heard. It's just received royal assent to the Lebanon Up Bill. Uh, we need to go through seven years of legislation before it's live. But in, um, it's will be live next year, but in essence, this will give local authorities the power to um, auction out the rental rights of the city that has been making the first 12 months of all war. On a on sort of short term sheets for sort of between one to five years. Um, and you can be able to do that, you know, uh, via the auction process. Um, anyone can bid for it. So you know, policies are being designed that will be, you know, no minimum threshold set. Um, and there is also going to be a um, pot of funding available to local authorities to support them with this, uh, too. So more detail on that. We think that might be, be it's quite you know a radical measure, don't get me wrong. Um, so it would be something that wants you on a very specific targeted um, basis. But if you feel that's for you, that also sends quite a signal to other negligent and this is about negligent landlords um, who don't want to engage, um, to say that actually they need to because this is essentially coming down the line. So if you're interested in it, I've got a separate team working on it, but um, you come talk to me and my other team would be very I think, I think definitely carrot first and then the sticks later, maybe. So, so I just can oh, I just, just say one thing that you know these these sort of challenges or issues, if you think of them as symptoms, like you've all got you've all presenting to the, the doctor with similar symptoms, but actually what might be causing those things might be slightly different in different different places. Therefore the solution and what what you need to do has to be place based. So you know, we, I, I, I like the idea of best practice, but it does get overshared sometimes because that practice might not be right with that set of challenges. So you know your, uh, you know your problems and what's the root cause of those problems. So what, you know, what we want to hear, how you're using this policy to come up with solutions in your places, uh, even though these challenge, you know, the, the actual symptoms, the vacancy, the poorly football and that sort of thing is, is similar. Sorry, so, do you want to tell you where you're from? Yeah, thank you. That's um, so, we've done this, we've done the mapping in our town centre. So, we've had um, a project which is um, getting building support to uh, sexual standard. The challenge we're having on getting some of them occupied again is that it's a conservation area. There's some quite big buildings, and a lot of people, lots of owners, have nature equity. So, 
they try and market them, they want more money than most people can afford to pay, and the sort of projects that we would like to see in there are probably community voluntary based ones who have no money. So it's how do we activate some of these spaces, potentially for multiple use, that the landlord is going to say, oh, don't want to touch it, what you can do with that for us. One of our guest speakers this afternoon is Bex Trevelyan uh, from Platform Places, and I think she's done an awful lot of work in this space. Um, so I'm not trying to close down any conversation. We've got five minutes till lunch, and I'm starving. Okay. But can we move, this, wait. Can move the conversation on ever so slightly from how bad landlords are? And I know, I know many of them. They are some of them are pretty bad, but not all of them. Um, but Steve, do you want to move on to sort of second talk? Yeah, but I suppose so. Let's. This is another issue to think about then. I don't know, but another one I come across often is antisocial behaviour, safety. And one challenge, as soon as you mentioned that, it, the, the whole debate was focused on that. So I'm just interested that is there been any proactive or examples where, where, where people have dealt with this in an effective way through partnership working? Yeah. But. So, yeah, brings me. Um, what, what all we're going to do here, give you a bit more detail in a second, is um, working in partnership, delivering some additional work from the police and crime commissioner based on the issues that the town centre address. So, youth antisocial behaviour, we're fortunate enough to have a, a youth zone that just, just started to be developed, it's probably two years away from being completed, but a big issue with young people and antisocial behaviour. What we've managed to do, which has been absolutely Nightmare actually working with the council to bring back into use one of its own building, public toilet. We've actually got a youth hub that's uh, over the last week, uh, official launch tomorrow, which enables us then to engage with those young people. We've got our uh, youth engagement team right in the centre of, of the town. Obviously, police can, can use that facility, etc. So there's lots of engagement, and really that's just a portal to all the other kind of access any of our young people. And utilise, and that's, that's one element. We've looked at things like enhanced CCTV, not only the CCTV in terms of the capital um, addition of eight cameras, but also an additional operator in that control room, specifically focused on the town centre. We've looked at uh, nine lash woods at uh, night time between the hours of 5 and 11. So, again, thinking about the kind of balance against women and girls, a gender and safe groups in uh, the town. That, the street masters will have a camera, so camera a radio, links in the control room. And the other thing we've been fortunate enough, um, which has again has been a real challenge, but trying to engage the business community, we've got a, a radio system that, that the majority of subscribe to, and a disc, uh, we call disc uh, app for the phones, again just a communication tool. We're now also trying to link in the uh, licensed premises into that. So all of these things are just starting, we don't know how how well some of these are going to go and how well they're not going to go, but actually it's a real opportunity for us in terms of leading the way and being a kind of trailblazer for the, the long term plan for towns. Obviously, how this will complement the work through this kind of initiative as well. So, I think there are opportunities, but I think what we're good at, someone mentioned earlier on about um, not a lot of money, and actually, when you've not got a lot of money coming in, sometimes you can strengthen your partnership work. And I think Used to having up until recently not a lot of money coming into quite a small partnership to kind of start to develop some of those things. Cool, thanks for sharing that. And we've got going to Maria, maybe this is our final comment because uh, I can hear Mark's belly rumbling in, 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 in the background there. Uh, the other element to our employee strategy is to look at our evening nighttime economy, and we have lots of issues on the AFB, particularly at night time. So uh, we want to use project here and what's very big on the bands is using the purple flag policy approach so those five um, elements um, and that's going to be our roadmap um, and I think it's really key we've got to talk to Tim mentioned earlier about making sure that everybody in the council is not along with their name but you part as well so that's the framework that we want to use so we're successfully in Barnes Lake we launched it uh, just as we're to go so we care about time to look at everything um, so that presentation process it picks up a lot of these issues, and for us as well as we're in, come in a little bit as well with the partners, and the space space, and the space females, and things like that. So that is obviously relevant to it. So it's been successful elsewhere, but we're looking for some new things. No, no pressure, no challenge. Okay.
Brilliant. I mean, I mean, the issue is that I mean, it's, it's understandably what the challenges are around. Right? I mean, it becomes a catch-all term, but actually, it's sometimes it's a very specific challenge, and it needs the right set of. It is a multi-sector approach to resolve. Is there anything to add or finish no, just that just section? Just to hear your, your yeah. The, the, the experts are here, the solutions are here, and you know, so share and talk to each other over lunch, good segue. Uh, we're going to break for lunch now, we've got, we're going to suggest we reconvene here about 22, oh, half past, okay, half past the hour. Um, the lunch is in the den, um, now if you can find that you get a prize, I'm not sure where it is. But there's the lunch, yeah, the prize is lunch. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it this morning. Can we thank uh, our, our organisers and Bill uh, for presenting? <laughs>